Well, to talk more about how this is going down in Australia, I'm joined here by Anthony Howard from DW News, who himself is from Australia. Um, tell us, Anthony, we've heard from government officials already in Australia commenting on this uh, horrible attack, but what about the general citizenry? What do they make of it? Well, I think the, the shock and the horror as this man faces court tomorrow, it, it won't subside, but it will be joined by feelings of uh, despair, embarrassment and, and shame. That, uh, that, that would apply no matter where an Australian pulled any, this attack in any part of the world. But when it's Australia and New Zealand, we share a particularly close and loving relationship, would, uh, I would say. Um, it's not just joined by geographical proximity. We're very close. We're just across the ditch, as we would say. But we have a shared colonial history. We've fought wars side by side, not under the same flag, but under the banner of the Anzacs, the Australian and New, Ze New Zealand Army Corps. So it's a historical... A uh, tie that runs deep. Um, we are great sporting rivals. We share trade with each other. We share jokes at each other's expense. Um, it's all there. We're like an extended family. And at, at this time, unfortunately, what th this throws into focus is the fact that we also share open borders with each other's citizens. We share the responsibility happily, happily um, of housing each other's citizens in one another's country. So there is that great shame to it of, of all the people that could have done this it's an Australian in New Zealand and it does cut deep beyond the fact that it's 49 lives lost that it's one of ours it, it does hurt now, given that the that an Australian man is the main suspect in this case what questions will it raise for authorities in Australia we all want to know why uh, and when he faces court and if the next time he takes the microphone, I, I guess it would be strange and, un and uh, unrealistic to expect to, to get a real explanation as to why from a deranged or apparently deranged lunatic as to why, how he could rationally explain his actions. But I think the questions will turn to something more heated in the political sense and that's how would you explain or is there any correlation between the political discourse around immigration in Australia, how has that in any small, tiny, tiny way, has it in any way um, contributed in the mind uh, of a deranged person, has that even been the beginnings of something, the, the thoughts about racism, has it led him in any small way to these actions? They're harsh questions, they're almost callous questions to ask at the moment, seeing as we haven't buried the dead, but as this goes forward, um, we ask ourselves, is there any way, is there anything um, that we have contributed as a country in our discussions about uh, in immigration and racism to these events? Now, Australian Prime Minister uh, Scott Morrison has spoken strongly on this tragedy. Uh, he called it uh, right-wing extremism. Let's listen to what he had to say. And as family members with our New Zealand cousins today, we grieve. We are shocked, we are appalled, we are outraged and we stand here and condemn absolutely the attack that occurred today by an extremist, right-wing, violent terrorist. I can confirm that the individual uh, who was taken into custody, I've been advised, is an Australian-born citizen. And obviously that element of the investigation Australian authorities are involved in and they will be uh, proceeding with their investigation which has already been stood up involving all the relevant agencies. The Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison there commenting on the mosque attacks in New Zealand. The main suspect, of course, being Australian. Um, Anthony, what do you make of the Prime Minister's statement and particularly the tone that he used? His words are going to be monitored very closely. Yeah, very much, and especially in the following days as the grief gives way to the, to the questions as to why and what the what Australian, the political discourse has done in, in past, especially though for this Conservative government in an election year. And again, this is a, seems like a callous moment to talk about it, but we're listening carefully to Scott Morrison to call out right-wing extremism, which he has not necessarily done in the past in, in relation to right-wing rallies. There's been great criticism from the left that they haven't said that is right-wing extremism and that is dangerous. So this was uh, 
entirely expected as a private citizen, but as a Prime Minister and a leader of a political party, he was being monitored today and will be in coming days as to what he's saying and what's the message that he's sending. Is he clearly making a distinction between illegal immigration and standing on a platform at this next election of we stopped the boats and we are tough on illegal immigration? Are they making that distinction that they're tough on illegal immigration and making it clear in the minds of all Australians and make it clear that they are not talking about all immigrants? that it's just illegal immigration. So those statements today about right-wing extremism were important that it called it out and set the tone for this election campaign that they are going to make this clear and make it clear to all Australians that they are making a clear separation between the two points. Anthony Howard from DW News, thank you so much. Now, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has extended her sympathy to the victims of the mosque attacks and uh, their loved ones. Here's what she had to say. This is a horrific attack on people praying and on their house of worship. This is an attack directed against Muslims. It is also an attack on New Zealand's democracy and on an open and tolerant society. We share these values with New Zealand, and we share their horror and condemnation of this terrible attack. Other world leaders have also been quick to condemn the terrorist attack and mourn the victims. French President Emmanuel Macron also sending his condolences. Our thoughts are with the victims and their loved ones of the heinous crimes against the mosques of Christchurch in New Zealand, he writes. France stands up against all forms of extremism and works with its partners against terrorism across the world. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan also expressing shock, saying in a tweet that he strongly condemns the terrorist attack. This reaffirms what we've always maintained. He tweets that terrorism does not have a religion. Prayers go to the victims and their families.